Hi everyone, thank you for joining us this afternoon. My name is Alice Chance. I am Head of Student Operations at Command Shift. We are a software engineering bootcamp that runs part-time. Um, if you are interested in finding out a little bit more about us, then head over to Command Shift website and you can find all about our courses. Um, today we are doing a career Q&A, which I'm super excited about. I am joined with, by James from Immersive Labs. Um, he's gonna be talking to you really about everything Everything, everything recruitment related, I guess. It's got, I think it's around seven years of experience you've got now within tech recruitment. Um, so he is a book of knowledge. We've decided to do this as a Q&A session because this, I know a lot of your students have so many questions you want to ask. So this is just an opportunity really to ask all those questions that you've got, get somebody else's perspective. Um, if you think about applying for jobs, um, what do you need set up? What should you be doing? Um, and some tips and tricks tricks of the trade so i will hand over to you james uh yeah so i guess i'll just start by introducing myself if that's all right that's the best place to start and uh i won't bore you with like my life story but i'll uh, <laughs> i'll just tell you a bit about i guess why i got into tech recruitment why i stayed in it and why i guess i'm at immersive labs and yeah i guess why i'm excited to talk to you really so yeah i guess flashback a little bit so yeah seven years ago as i said like i was <laughs> I was working in sales um, and marketing, and I think what I really enjoyed about that is I like talking to people. Um, like I liked kind of making a human connection with people and helping them. Uh, and it was a bit like sales wasn't really the best way for me to do that. Um, so I'd always been kind of slightly interested in recruitment because to me it was like I found it really fascinating. I thought like there's so much around like like you don't really realize until you go into the industry, especially in tech, like how much so goes much to learn. learn. Yeah. yeah it's not just like i mean again years and years ago when i was very young i'd, I'd send the cv and i'd hope i'd get a call and that was kind of it and if i didn't i was like oh, okay that's cool so like anyway i didn't realize there's so much other infrastructure around it so anyway a very good friend of mine like kind of said hey you should come and apply and work with our company i said yeah sure thing started doing that like and it was one of those things where my first kind of five or six months of recruitment i was kind of just I guess just doing it by the numbers like i kind of was just like you know just 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 doing just phoning people but like what i was really enjoying was just talking to people like learning about the industry and i was getting really interested in a bit like this is literally where i need to be like cyber security software development that is like that's me like that's like i'm i want to do these jobs that people are like talking to me about you know i, I could sit to, like listen all day so anyway like flash forward a bit like i got I became a very niche recruiter. So I was working in offensive security, like penetration testing. And if you're in that field, it's very much, a, it's a bit like a, it's a bit like another world really, because it's very kind of, it's one of those things like, want, to get into it is quite hard, but once you're in there, like it's like the best job. Uh, and it was a lot around like trust and understand the industry. And for me, that was great because, you know, I was building a lot of personal connections, but I got to the point where I was like, I really enjoy what I'm doing, but I want to be, I want to be working for like one company and I want to be like really involved in actually influencing what the company do and their processes, influencing the product in my own little way. So yeah, I found Immersive Labs, like I won't go on and about them right now, but like I basically like I'd already known of them for a few years and I really liked the ethos of the company and like the actual technology, like actually managing, you know, upskilling people, like taking people who have an interest in cyber and making them into cyber professionals and i had a few people that had used the platform and had gained roles that way and so i was like that sounds like a cool company i want to work for them so i applied i was successful and i've not looked back really like i think you know i've made so much more of a personal impact here like i feel like you know i'm i'm helping people a lot more like i work with a lot of juniors like i i go to a lot of events and talk, you know, advocate for what we do and advocate about careers and like you know, I see what I do happen on a day to day basis because we're uh, I mean, we're a 300 person company, but that is quite small, <laughs> like in, in comparison. So, you know, you really kind of, you know, you can do something and it actually makes an impact that you see happen in a few weeks rather than you, you do something and then it kind of goes off into a hole. You never see it again kind of thing, which happens when you work for a really big company. So, yeah, I've kind of always been passionate about even when I worked for a recruitment agency, like helping people who are early in their career to actually you know, get on the ladder and go like, well, how do you know, I look at myself when I was very young and think, well, I didn't know what to do. And I only learned through talking to people and you know, learning. And I thought I want to pass that knowledge on. Like I want to 
pass the tricks on, you know, so to say. So, yeah, it's something I'm passionate about, and that's why I'm here. Cool. Thank you, James. Um, so I guess we'll hand it over to everyone who's watching us. What questions have you got for James? What help can he give you? Um, I had a couple of questions um, submitted to me beforehand from people who weren't actually able to make the event. Um, so one person had asked me, um, what do you think needs to be included within an impactful cover letter? What would you look for in a cover letter? I That's think this is a really big topic. And I think there's a lot of people can rush cover letters, use one cover letter for every application. Yeah. It's like, what would you say is the right process when it comes to a cover letter? So this is a good question because I've I've recently been recruiting for uh, like a, re well, a little while ago, like a relatively junior role. And like, this is something you will find is that obviously you have like lots of people apply and their CVs all look really different. So you have to look at the cover letter because that's the only way, because I can't, you know, if you've got a hundred people apply for a role, I can't call a hundred people, <laughs> I'd love to, but you know, so you have to think to yourself, okay, like what do I look at to kind of distinguish a lot of these people who on like, um, on paper look very similar. So you look at the cover letter because I was always taught that like your CV is where you kind of state a lot of facts. Whereas like your cover letter is where you actually show your personality a little bit. Like it's where you go, you know, you think, oh, this person's a person, you know? So yeah, you read through a lot. You know, I read through a lot of cover letters recently. So I think for me, I think it's just, again, I think it's just accentuating what you can't say in your CV. So it's almost telling a little bit of a story. So I think kind of keeping it to what like, one page is always a, a good thing. So I think it's basically in the first kind of, paragraph i know it sounds really obvious but just saying like why you want to work for the company because again i've seen some cover letters come through where without saying horrible you can tell it's generic like you can tell it's just like, yeah, like, yeah. a role and like i've even seen ones with typos where they put the wrong role in so i know it sounds quite obvious but i think that's a big thing because we look at that and i think again that's your first impression of someone that you've never met them you know nothing about them you go even if it's it's something like you know even if it's something a bit like grand like oh like i read your website and your pro you know what you're trying to do in the cybersecurity community is fascinating and you know, your, pro your mm. product sounds amazing or i tried out the free trial of your product and it sounds great or something like that or you know i read the more i read about you the more i was excited about the role and then kind of just briefly going into like why you feel you're a good fit for the position so it could be something as simple as like i don't know if it's a marketing role for instance like okay i did like say you did you wrote for a student newspaper at, um at university or hey like i like to write like i like to write in my spare time like i have a blog or if it's a technical role like i have a technical blog or i have a github and i con you know i've been to this meetup or i'm a member of this society like the computer society or something just something that kind of connects you to the role so not just like hey i've sent mm -hmm. out 500 applications you know something that says i've seen this role and i really want to talk to you about it and also something that kind of shows you a little bit of your personality so talking about yourself you know there's the i'm hard working i'm driven i'm diligent but i think tell me a bit more about you like you know why are you those things like you might say hey like you know i play for our school hockey team and you know i've learned this so something that kind of like makes it real like anyone can say oh, i'm driven you know but what shows that you're driven so you can say you yeah know, something that tells you a little bit about yourself and i know obviously pages <laughs> seems like quite not enough to get in there but i think it's just those bits really i think the main thing for me is you know why have you applied who are you a little bit like a little bit about your interests and also someone in the chat just mentioned career changes i will get back to that but i think changing <laughs> career i think saying why like in the cover letter is a good thing so you can say something like i've been an accountant for four years and i've not you know i've always been interested in computers like i used to build pcs or something like that and now having the opportunity to have done a boot camp or something like that you know my interest has grown and just something like that i think that just kind of connects why you've chosen this field like and why you've why you've changed over it's good so yeah i really agree with like everything you've just said there for me and when i'm speaking to the students i really think getting that passion across is really important like why have you done this um what what were you doing before and i guess if you can sort of see how your past experiences can potentially link as well that's always a good thing but 
That's a great point. Thank you. Um, so Thasneema has asked, with career changes, should we talk about our previous careers within a cover letter? Yeah, so that's a really good um, that's a really good question. So I'll take this back to me a little bit personally. So when I was, again, a bit earlier in my career, so when I was trying to get into sales, like <laughs> I'd done a lot of like temp roles and I'd done a lot of different stuff. And people used to joke with me like, oh, you've had like a thousand jobs and stuff. And so like your CV must be like 50 pages. And mm -hmm. I thought, but, you know, it was a bit longer. And to be honest, as I've got older, I've cut out some of those jobs because I've got more more relevant experience. But I think what I would say is 100% you should talk about what you've done before because like that defines you, like that makes you different from someone else. Like, ev like I would say tech especially has, it doesn't necessarily have a predefined route. It's not like being a, a surgeon or a doctor where it's like, you go to school, you go to university, you do a PhD, you're a doctor, you're a surgeon. <laughs> you know, it's kind of, there's not like, in my past, I've hired people who've been, who've been journalists, who've, who've managed pubs, who've been like marketing professionals, who've been lawyers, you know, completely like not, like not tech related at all. And one of my first questions to that person is, why are we talking? Like, why... You know, again, when I was talking to a lawyer who wanted to move into information governance, my first question was like, you're a legal professional. Why, mm -hmm. what, why, why? Why have you suddenly decided to jump? Like, you didn't just wake up one morning and go, I want to be in cybersecurity. You know, something <laughs> motivated you. So they kind of tell that story on their CV. Like they say, I was doing this and I thought this. So I would say, I would say kind of using that opportunity to talk about your previous career, but also like, talk about how it's got you to where you are so for instance i don't know say you were like a legal so i don't know, I keep going about legal but say you're a legal secretary for like a year for instance you might say you know when i was doing this role you know i became you know i, I learned time management i learned project management you know i spent a lot of time on the phone and you know gaining soft skills so you're like linking that previous career to what you want to do so you're kind of picking out the things because it's one of those things where you sit down to actually write about what you've done i do it quite a lot reflect and think i do quite a lot of different things but you always forget little things that you do um so i think yes is a short answer i think all, always but at the same time make it relevant but if for instance you know you worked in a shop or something like that i'd say put that on your cv but don't go into like massive depth about it you could do it one line but i'd say still put it on there Agreed. I think that's what's interesting about career changes is you can really bring skills over from your previous career that's into this, especially if you're joining like a junior level, any other knowledge you have from another role or any of the skills that you've built up just up to, adds to your application, especially compared to potentially someone fresh out of university who's never had a job before, you know, you're probably going to hit the ground running a little bit quicker. I would say personally, because you understand what it's like to actually have a job and be in that sort of environment um cool thank you um tom d you've asked a couple of questions so the first one is how do we make cyber less exclusive and easier to break into that is a big question uh, <laughs> it's something, no, but like in a good way because it's something that yeah we don't have a specific answer to but i'm going to try my best because we talk about this quite a lot at work and i i mm -hmm. talk about it with my friends in cyber security quite a lot i think I think so. There's a couple of different things. I'm going to try because I say it's a big question, so I'm going to try and like we could do a whole call on this. But I'm going to try and like break it down into a couple of little smaller things. I'm just trying to think how to do that in my head. So basically, I think it's so. Let's let so barriers is one thing. So I think there are barriers in cybersecurity, and there shouldn't be. So I think one thing is, and this might be controversial, but I think is maybe not necessarily needing to have a degree into getting into cyber security so that kind of pulls into that career changes and that soft skills piece of let's not just look at like qualifications let's look at what a person does like what like not like not what's written oh they've got or 2.1 but like what do they do like what you know i think you know let's look at this person as a person not just a stack of qualifications so i think it's basically about trying to make interview processes more skills based and more around what, what we refer to in immersive labs as evidencing. So for instance, you could have say slight sideways, but you could have two people doing the same job, but they might have completely different levels of experience. So how do you 
how do you assess those two people those two people are doing the same job but they could be very different and actually a lot more skilled than you know so if you're looking to hire another person into that team who's like you should you should get them to show you what they can do rather than tell you you should find a way for them to demonstrate they have the experience without having to say oh you know i've done all these things so making you know removing the barriers so removing a degree removing years of experience as well like what i would say is one of the best people i ever hired in my career like was was a was a pub landlord and he on paper he didn't have any experience but when we started talking he was telling me about you know he'd entered some he went to he went he went to kind of he went along to a meetup and he'd done some hackathons like and he was like he he'd won them and so straight away he'd shown he had these skills and i was like well we need to show employers you have these skills so it was a conversation for me to have to say look on paper you know not the typical profile but you know put this person in front of a computer get him to do a technical test for you and he will show you what he can do and lo and behold very successful so i think that is one way to do it like using skill like using like labs or virtual environments like getting people to show you what they can do and using that as part of the interview process like using that as a way a way to, to do that and i think just also like i guess another way just moving away from that part is creating an environment where it's not exclusive and i know that sounds kind of hard like you know it shouldn't be like a club you have to get into but i think creating events that allow entry people entry-level people to to attend to kind of listen to people who's been on the journey that they want to go on and know that it's not this like exclusive club you have to break into like I hate when people say break into cyber because it sounds like it's like a puzzle <laughs> that you have to kind of force you have to force your way in but we need to you know again it's a longer discussion to have but you know we need to foster an environment like we have to you know teach people cyber security skills earlier like at school like introduce it into the workplace in different avenues so again it's a really big question but hopefully that helps like i'm happy to elaborate more but again that could be the whole call <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I think that's really helpful and I think it runs true on software engineering as well and it's how those how do you as a junior demonstrate that you have the relevant skills and I think you're right joining hackathons attending networking events um, and that sort of thing is really big and it gives you a lot of merit within the industry um, yeah I think that was really helpful uh, tell master another question for people changing from another career what soft skills organizational stuff would you highlight on your CV yeah, so that's a very good question. I think, especially so if we focus on software development a bit more than cyber, I think it's really, it's not 100% something you have to have. But I think soft skills, again, can help differentiate yourself um, because at the end of the day, especially when you're earlier in your career, like working in a team and pair programming is so like um, essential for you to get better, but also for people to kind of recognize and go, hey, like you can do some really cool stuff, but also to surprise yourself. Like if you're, if you're just like, I have a lot of juniors will talk to me and say, hey, I want to work remotely from day one. And I say, that's fine. But at the same time, how will you ever benchmark your skills against others if you're just working solo? And like, mm -hmm. how will you ever know that you're learning the right things? A bit like, this is a slight aside, but I taught myself to play guitar. And like, I think I'm pretty good, but I've never had a lesson. And I keep saying to myself, I need to have lessons because I think I'm good, but I have no way of benchmarking how good I am. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> comparing the talent to someone never, else. Like, I've never taught me. Feedback as well. Yeah, I've probably got bad habits that I, again, like mm -hmm. in the advent of YouTube, I'd watch tutorials and literally it was like, wait, I'm, my fingers are in the wrong position. Do you know what I mean? Like, I never knew that because I just, I just learned this habit, this bad habit. So it's a similar thing with like software development. Like there's ways to do it. Like and you can be very successful, but you know, when someone else looks at your code or does a code review and gives you feedback, then you suddenly go, Hey, wait a minute. Like I, I didn't realize these things. So, and it's also soft skills are useful for you as well in the sense of giving feedback to others and getting your point across. So I think, what the kind of soft skills to highlight is i think i think drive is a really important one so 
I'm not saying that like you spend all day and night doing software development, but I think showing that it's a passion for you, like it's not just a job, because I think software development in particular can be quite monotonous. And I think if you don't, you know, I think, you know, it, you can, you know, I think showing that, showing you have a GitHub, for instance, or maybe saying that, hey, I built a website for a friend or something like that, like just shows that like you're passionate about it and it's something you enjoy. Um, and also like, I think, like organization, you mentioned like organizational skills. So kind of, I suppose like project management. So maybe something like, oh, I ran a meetup for my friends or I, I ran a hackathon or it could be something from like say university or something like that saying, you know, I I put a meetup together. You know, I, 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 I don't know, I put a meetup together for three of my like-minded friends for us to go and sit in a, in a bar and with our laptops and, and kind of you know, look at each other's code or, I run a blog where I get suggestions. So like those are all soft skills and they're all things that like we look for. So I think breaking them down almost into like subheadings is a good thing. So like drive or like communication or, you know, those kind of things is a good way of doing it. So. Yeah, I think you're right. And I think um, they're the difference when you're trying to stand out on a couple of or a CV as a junior, because there is so many people applying at that level. It's how can you, Sort of make that difference um thank you rob has asked is job seeking burnout a thing and what steps would you take to rebuild the habit yeah so i think i would definitely say it is a thing like i, I read quite a few things on linkedin that i see and i think it i speak to a lot of people who have applied for a lot of jobs and you can almost we sense it in a way where mm -hmm. uh, and i think it's like any kind of burnout like burnout is a bad thing in general like even if you love something like you shouldn't do it all the time like you shouldn't make it your life like you know I, I'll be honest I've been burned out before like when I was early in my recruitment career I used to work a lot and for me it was just normal but I look back and I think you know was that productive yes I got results no. it, but how you know did I have a life not really so I think it's just balanced like I think you should definitely have goals in mind when you're applying for jobs as to like maybe little like 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 a north star or little metrics of i'm going to apply to x amount of jobs in the morning and then i'm going to go for a walk or i'm going to do something i like in between so that way you're not just fixated on um you're not just fixated on waiting for the reply you know it's yeah. part of your day rather than your day but at the mm -hmm. same time it's doing different ways of applying for jobs. So in the morning, you might look at job boards, make a list of jobs you want to apply for. And then later on in the day, you'll send the applications. In between that, you might be on LinkedIn, connecting with people who are in the field or maybe posting something online. So you're, you're applying, like you're seeking a job, but you're doing it a different way. You're not doing the same thing over and over again. Does that make sense? So that way, hopefully it limits burnout and it you know varies the, the ways that you're applying. So I think... A bit of variety is good but also just stepping away like i think it can be i think as you say like i know people who have applied for lots and lots of jobs and by the time they get to that latter application like they're so kind of frustrated that it comes across and it you know and yeah i think it i think it is a very real thing so i think it's just balance like everything else like doing things you like but also varying what you do so not just not just applying to loads of jobs on job boards but maybe connecting with some hiring managers and having conversations. I mean, that's a point we can come back to in a bit, but when we get, when we talk about network a bit later on, but yeah, I think that's- I agree. Agreed with everything you just said. I think there's a habit that people get into just applying for jobs on LinkedIn or applying for jobs on, and it's on Total Jobs Read, they sort of sites and it's so easy. It's just like a one click. You have so little thought going into the applications as well a lot of the time. I do think stepping things up, changing it up a little bit, different ways of approaching people, different ways of finding roles that you find interesting is a really good way. Because it what's that saying, isn't it, isn't there, that's doing the same thing over and over again and not getting the results is insanity. I've said that so badly, but you know yeah, what I'm no, I know exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah and it, it feels like you're going insane. If you're applying for loads of jobs and you're not getting the results that you expected or the results that you wanted, it's it's really hard work and job burnout is very real. Um I think 
sorry to sorry to interrupt but i just, just oh, think, no, yeah, point. I think like it's good to be a bit reflective like i think mm -hmm. i've had a few people connect with me in the past to say hey james i've applied for 50 jobs this month i haven't had a single person come back to me you know what, what do you think i'm doing wrong and i say can i have a look at your cv and i'd say you know and how can i have a look at your cover letter and then i give them some feedback and i say you know and then all of a sudden they go, I haven't thought of that. So I think getting a second opinion from someone, like showing a partner or showing a friend in the industry, I think is quite useful. Like if you know someone who's working in the industry, like show them your cover letter or show them the email you're sending or show, you know, and then, because like I do a lot of creative writing in my spare time and like I will write stuff and I think this is really good, but then I'll come back to it like a few months later and go, oh, <laughs> that's not as good. Or I'll show it to my wife and she'll be like, yeah. oh, like, I don't think I didn't get what you're trying to get at here, but in my head it's so obvious, but I haven't articulated it. So it's mm -hmm. the same with like, for jobs. Like you're thinking to yourself, why am I not getting results? Am I doing something wrong? Or it might be you're doing everything right. It's just it just it's just a it's a numbers game sometimes where sometimes you do have yeah. to put in a lot of that groundwork. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's reassurance to have someone say, actually, what you're doing is is right. Like you're doing the right thing. It's just not happened yet. But sometimes it's the opposite conversation where it says, well, actually, you're not you're not tailoring yourself enough or you're not. And, then all this, and I've had that where people go away and all of a sudden it's like, oh, like I've got a response. I've got an interview, you know, and it's, you know, it's only like a, a light bulb moment. So I think seeking feedback from peers is, is, is a way as well. Yeah, you'll be surprised how much like a little thing can change because I check all the student CVs for them. And then I'll regularly say, can you can you all send me your CVs again? And not because... Like, just because I might look at it again two weeks later and be like, actually, I think it would look better a bit like this, or it would look better a little bit like this. And it's you constantly need to be changing your CV, your, your cover letter. Well, not constantly, but you know, you need to be keeping it fresh, looking at different ways of approaching your experience. Um, but yeah, thank you, Rob, for that question. That was a good question. Uh, Tom said he was very encouraged by your answer, and that was one on cybersecurity so well done for that um tony has asked a question question i'm seeing a lot of jobs with c sharp and dot net experience required so he doesn't have experience within that um within those languages is it worth even applying for them if i've never used this tech is it or is it better to focus on what you know and put more effort into those roles yeah it's a good question i'm just thinking because there's there's not necessarily a right or wrong answer to this. Yeah. I'm going to basically, I'm going to go both sides and just explain what I think on both sides and you can draw your own conclusion. I think often, so it depends on the level of the role. So if it's an entry level role, if you've got experience in a similar language, so you talk about, say, you've never used C Sharp, but as long as you kind of mention that on your CV, so you might say, you know, I know all you're on your cover letter, you like you might say, I've noticed that this I say it's a junior C sharp developer. I've noticed that this role is a junior C sharp developer. I don't have experience with C sharp. However, I have used Python or I've used Ruby or I've used you know kind of JavaScript and I feel the principles of that that I've studied give me at least a basic grounding and that hopefully I could upskill into this. So just being a bit transparent to say, I've not done this, but I've done something similar. I'm aware <laughs> it's not the same thing. And just, just articulating that because often I will see CVs where someone will say C-sharp experience and then you speak to them and they haven't actually got C-sharp experience. It's just something they're learning, which is fine, but you have to articulate that a little bit um, mm -hmm. sometimes. Um, so I would say it is worth applying in some it just depends on the level of the role. Like if it's a role where they're asking for experience and it looks like it's a bit more of a mid-level role, a bit more of an experience role, I'd say it's probably not. But if it's a junior role, I think it's elite and you have experience a different language. So but on the flip side, focusing on what you know is better. Like if you think to yourself, you know what, I have lots of experience with Python, I can do this, then I think that shows that's a lot stronger as well. Like I think often when you're applying for, especially for developer jobs where it it can all be just very different. Like I think also just if it's a back-end role, then making sure you're emphasizing experience you have in back-end development. Because I've had that before where you have a back-end developer role advertised and then you have lots of people with front-end development that haven't really shown that they know back-end. You know what I mean? That they say that, you know, well, on the, on the flip side as well. So 
but at the same time i think any experience you have is good experience so it's a tricky one to answer because i i know i think a job is not worth applying for unless it's a senior role and you're you, you haven't got that experience which is you know which is completely different so i think i would focus on what you know but i i wouldn't completely discount things because especially with a junior role and hopefully a good company if it's a company like ours you know they will understand you don't know everything because I think this is something which I always share with people. Like I say, a lot of job roles, like they don't expect you to know everything from day one, but they expect you to be coachable and teachable. And I think that's what, in the, in the end of the day, that's what the interview process is about. It's not, mm -hmm. hey, here's a square hole. Let's put a square in there. You know, it's a case of, it's a diamond, but you know, it's, a, it's not quite fit, but actually we'll get there and we can see from the interview process, this person, Will pick things up really quickly they're teachable they're coachable you know they they're driven like they will learn it you know they're not you know no one not many people change job because they just want to go to the exact same thing there's always a learning even at senior level there's always a learning curve like you never just start i'm really sorry to interrupt you at the door i just got to really quickly grab the door i'm very sorry i'll be two seconds i'll keep talking in the meantime so um so yeah so i think it's it's really important that um you know that you show we talked about soft skills earlier but that we you show that you're driven you show that you're coachable because you know i talk to a lot of people who have a lot of experience and it's very rare people just go sideways like they just go oh i'm going to go do the exact same job somewhere else like i always say to people like what are you expecting to learn when you come here like what are you bringing and what do you hope to learn and especially the case with junior roles like you know you're going to do a lot of learning but i think it's about yeah demonstrating that you, you yeah that you have that uh ability so yeah um yeah that's my, my question um i'm just gonna see if there's any questions i've missed just while alice is away um i'm sorry i'm i'm briefly back it's um i wouldn't normally do this it's a very important document i'm sending to a different country um James, would you mind speaking to people about the importance of networking? Yes, that's pretty much what's really, really helpful. Yeah. I'm so sorry about this, everyone. No, no, that's okay. Um, so yeah, so I, I've touched on it a little bit, but I think it's something that a few people have requested to know about, and it's quite a. I like to think it's something I'm quite good at. <laughs> so I, I suppose, but I wasn't always good at it. So I think that's it's something you can learn. Like just to kind of go back in time a little bit, like. I mean, I was and slam quite shy, even though I taught lots. Like, that doesn't mean that I'm not shy. Like, I never saw myself in a sales or a customer facing role or talking to people on the phone. Like, my very first, I'll tell you a funny story. My very first job where I had to pick up the phone, I, someone called in, I picked up the phone and I just froze and put the phone down. And the person that sat next to me said, Did you just put the phone down, that person? I was like, I just panicked. I don't know why. <laughs> and I so, used to like, do that all the time as well in recruitment. I'd be like, ah, I don't know what to say. Yeah, I would do the same. So, you know, and it's like, it's, it was so embarrassing. But I look back at that and I think, <laughs> how far have I come, right? And that was only like 10, 12 years ago. It's not that long. I mean, it is, but it's not. So I think if I can do it, anyone can do it. So I think, like, I look back. So networking is probably your most important tool. And like, I think again I, there's loads, so many stories i can tell i'll tell a story in a bit about someone who did the best networking i've ever seen so i think it's the one like people talk about how do you differentiate yourself and how do you stand out i think networking is how you do and it's not just because of oh it's who you know but it's about just making people aware you exist and making people aware of who you are because it's <laughs> I don't want to use a really like bizarre analogy but i use this quite a lot but it's a bit like internet dating or like dating in general like if people don't know you're out there on the market they don't know like they don't know you're looking for love you know like you gotta do the same like you've got you've got to look around like you know you've got you got a fish you know you can say and it's it's the same thing sometimes when you're looking for a new role like there's people like i've met people and they'll say to me like i wasn't actually looking for a new job james but i met you the other day and i suddenly thought to myself hey kind of want to like to come and work for you have you got, have you got something and it's like well if i hadn't have bumped into you we never would have had that conversation so going back to the start then like my very first networking event was a disaster because i went there i didn't i just thought i want to try and just get out and about i want to try and just meet people in the industry and 
I went there and I didn't really speak to anyone. I kind of had a drink and just watched everyone, just people watch loads. And I was a bit like, I just isn't this isn't the way to do this. So I went you back. You feel really out of your depth, don't you, when you're there? I well, that was it. I mean, you're like, like yeah. how was everyone talking about stuff? I don't know what to say. Like, he's <laughs> imposter syndrome as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah very I much so. I thought, Why am I here? You know, like, yeah. I thought, I'm not as smart as these people. I've got nothing to contribute. So I went away and I reflected. I thought to myself, okay, like, I can't have been the only person. Because I, I was looking around the room and I was thinking, there's a few people like me who aren't really speaking to anyone. So I thought, okay, next time I go, I'm going to try a bit different and actually talk to people. So what I did is basically the next time I went to a networking event, I basically looked around and I saw who else isn't talking to people. And I spoke to them because I thought, who are they? What's their story? So I made a few, I had a few chats, made a few connections. Um, just, just they were similar to me. They were just looking for a job in the industry or they were here to learn. It was cool hearing their story. And then we kind of all went for like, a bit of a social after the talks and I just thought you know what I'm gonna do I thought I started talking to one of the speakers came over and started talking to one of the people I was talking to and I thought to myself oh my gosh this, this, this speaker's talking to us so I thought I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say hey I liked your talk and you know I'd like to know a bit more so they happily said well I'm gonna tell you a bit more so we had a good chat and we stayed in contact like I basically he said hey like, I, I like the fact that you're actually interested in my talk you wanted to know more and we you know, they became a bit of a mentor figure like later on, but like just someone like I just exchange emails and bounce ideas off, which literally from that like 15 minute conversation, you never would have expected. But at the same time, like, again, I, I got more confident. I thought to myself, okay, I can't be a wallflower. Like I have to talk to people, but I don't have to talk to people about technical things. I just have to talk to them as people like anyone else. I just have to kind of make a personal connection with them. Um, not even just say I'm looking for a job or I'm looking to recruit, like just just find out who they are. And what I would do is I would meet people, I would add them on LinkedIn after, say, hey, it was nice to meet you the other day. You know, if you're ever at another tech meetup, you could, you know, what's going on? In, like I was going to a lot of meetups in London. So I said, what's going on? In, you know, do you know of any other meetups like this? Or are you going to anything else? And people would say, hey, I am, come along. I would meet, I would go with them. I would meet other like-minded people. And then I'd be gradually expanding my network. And when I first joined in, like joined LinkedIn properly, like seven years ago, I had like 10 connections. And within a couple of months of doing that, I had like 200. And they were all people I'd met, like just had the odd conversation with. Um, but what I would say is is, is good. It's like people start to recognize you. People start to say, oh, that's that person that is learning JavaScript. Or, oh, that's that person that is looking for an entry level role. Or, you know, and they start to you know, people like people know, like if people start to recognize you and they start to trust you and they start to think this person really wants to do this. You know what I mean? Like I'll tell, well, I'll tell you a story. So there was a person I would meet, see at these meetups who was working in a bank, like just working behind a desk in a bank essentially. And he was going to meetups. And one day he started talking to one of the people that was there just about why he was there. Cause he was looking to get into tech, not into tech. And the person that was there, happened to be quite high up in a, in a tech company. And they said, I've seen you a few times, you know, it's cool to hear your story. And he said, you know, let's keep in contact. Lo and behold, a couple of weeks later, that person had an opportunity in his team for a junior. And he thought, I met someone the other day, he'd be good for that. He reached out and he said, hey, like, I, <laughs> this is a bit weird, but like, I'm, you know, we had a chat the other day. I know that you're looking, you know, do you want to come and interview? And he said, yeah, sure thing. He interviewed, he got the job five years later he's still that same company he's like a team lead now and he had like no experience like he learned everything there and it was it's a bit of chance and i'm not going to say that will happen every time but i think it's just as i say it's just it's just being at the table and i think and it goes back mm -hmm. to that part about how we make cyber less exclusive like we make the table less exclusive like we invite people there we put people in a room with the right people that will see them you know it's like when people do conference talks for instance like there's so many people i've met that i've seen do talks and i think wow that person must be super knowledgeable and i'll start talking to them and say i've got three months experience i'm not knowledgeable i just just like to share my ideas and you, you know you start to see that and i think just yeah just being visible and just just being in the pool so these weird analogies but like i think they're all really great and i think what you said is so true and like even i've taken like what you just said on board is like you don't need to go in there and and be an expert or be the most knowledgeable person and you just 
I think it's just as important to just go in there and be friendly and be just have a conversation with somebody and just have a chat and be known for being like that because a lot of the time especially for juniors it is about really they want to know about your skills but it is quite personality you somebody they want to work with they use somebody they want to have on their team and that's a really really good point and you have to have to start somewhere and like you said there'll be good times where it'll be you'll feel really fulfilled and like you've got loads out of it and there'll be the times when you're like oh, I probably could do this better next time and it's just like everything it is a learning experience but I think a really great one it's a gradual thing as well like as I say you're not yeah. you know, I, I I went with a friend to a meet up and I said look you know just come along meet some people have some conversations and yeah he did quite well he had some chats and stuff but then he kind of came away a few weeks later and he said oh, well nothing's come out of it and I said well mm -hmm. It's not like you don't just, it's not magic, it's not a magic solution. I say you have to, you have to just keep talking to them, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know, one, you know, one of the, one of the reasons I, you know, I was, I guess, I wouldn't say it's directly related, but one of the ways I came to work in my current role was I was at a, a conference basically, and I went out for lunch with someone I knew who was there with, who happened to, was with someone from Mercy Labs. And, we had literally all of a 15 minute chat basically. And again, like a year and a half later, when I was started looking for a role, I thought to myself, I've met someone from there. I wonder if he remembers me. So I was connected with him on LinkedIn. I messaged him. I said, Hey, you know, we met briefly. We had a real good chat. And, you know, how is it to work at Mercer Labs? And he said, Hey, I remember you. Like, I think you'd be really good here. And I was like, Oh, that's nice to hear. And he said, You know, if you're going to yeah. a job, let me know. And, you know, so, well, I put a good word, but I'll I'll mention that I've met you, and I thought, oh, that's really like you didn't I you didn't have to do that. That's really nice of you. But I thought if I hadn't made that little connection, that that mm -hmm. you know that, that was helpful to me. And it's just again, it's not about who you know, but it's all about just thinking. Well, how what can I do to stand out? Like, how do I stand out from my peers? And I think networking is a way. And I'm not saying you have to be like the friendliest, but like there's so many people I meet at meetups who are who are really shy and introverted, but you just have to think well what does this you know, just you know everyone can have a conversation about something and or they can just there to listen you know they're just like i'm just here to just listen and absorb knowledge and that is just as useful mm -hmm. and as, you know, being in Definitely. the room yeah and then from i guess from that if you do feel like you're a bit more introverted or i guess you'd feel a bit out of your comfort zone starting those conversations it's then you can add those people on linkedin you can connect with them on there you can send them a message i came to your talk yesterday showing an interest a lot of the time if, if it's a recruitment a recruiter that's putting on the event or an organization they'll see your name if you're regularly attending the same events and that looks really good yeah so i'm i'm so pro networking events and i think everywhere has them it may take t probably 10 minutes to find four networking events in the next there's virtual ones as well like there's virtual networking yeah. events you don't have to go yeah and they're just as useful if not more so like there's people i've become res you know, friends with who i've never met like just through like virtual yeah. just chats you know and i think like if i did meet them i don't know if we'd get on we hopefully we would but you can, you can, <laughs> the connection though like it's still something you know so. no agreed agreed cool um does anyone else have any questions that's watching us live is there anything else anyone would like to ask um somebody and a big question is I guess, and um, I'll, I'll ask this now, since we don't have any questions in the chat, is about interview preparation. Um, it's such mm. a big thing. And I think preparing for interviews is something that the students get a little bit. I, well, I think a technical interview, as when you've not done technical interviews before, is quite nerve wracking. Um, what would be your tips for somebody when it comes to a technical interview? And like, what, what would you say you definitely need to prepare? so yes yeah, so there's a couple of different things i'll kind of just go through them as almost like a list form i think this is like the most important thing and I know, again i if it's obvious then i'd rather say it be it's obvious no be obvious. obvious i think read about the company and mm -hmm. think about why do you want to work there because that's one of the first questions i always ask for someone is other than you other than you want a job like why do you want to work <laughs> Like, why don't you want to why don't you want to work for this other company like what why why do you, like everyone's got a reason it's not just you know and i think have it like have just have a look at the website like just get a feel for i'm not saying you have to know 
in depth what a company wow. does, but just get a, a, a feel for like what they do. Maybe have a look at their socials, like get a feel for like because every company has some kind of Instagram or Twitter. Like have yeah. a look at like what people do there. So have a look at like their community outreach or something like that, and just get a bit of a feel for the company culture. And then think to yourself, like, why do I want to be a part of that? You probably already answered it in your head because if you're looking at it thinking, oh, that's like one of the things that I always look at company. I always like to see when companies post on LinkedIn about things they do as a team together. Like I saw a company who they took everyone to make pizza. And I thought to myself, I'd love to do that. <laughs> like I, I, I always want to work there because that sounds great. Do you know what I mean? Like, and, and it's just going to be little things like that. So, or, you know, so just, you know what why did you apply like you know that's something is important so that's the first thing so just do a little bit of read like 10 15 minutes just you know high level stuff of, of yeah the... i think this all most web like companies now have like a promotional video as well yeah. of why they want what's... you to work for them and like what's so great about them as a business to work for and i think that's such an easy talking point if, if you're feeling, really? thinking like i do just want my first job as a developer i don't really know how to answer that question about a specific company like I think you can just they give you the answers for that one sometimes they do, yeah I was gonna say they really do like I mean when I was applying for this role like, I watched the videos and they were literally like we do this come and work for us I thought that's exactly why I want to work there so I was always just saying and they, they were quite surprised I'd watched the video and I was like well yeah like I want to know more about you like I'm excited so I, I want to you know I want to know you know so I think that's that's a big thing I think in terms of other things I think just this is maybe skipping ahead a little bit, but just thinking of questions you want to ask them because an interview is a two-way street. It should be anyway, a good interview. It's not just, we're going to tell you loads about us. Do you want the job? It's, we want to tell you about us. We want to know about you, but also we want you, we want to know what you want to know about us because it could be a thing where like, we want you to work for us, but you might not want to work for us. Like, you know, I don't, you know, we don't want to, you know, we want to, we want to know from you as well. And I think, just having a think about some questions. I mean, your questions might be asked during, answered during the course of the interview, which is great. It's a good interview. Though. Um, but I think having like, and it could be like, they don't necessarily need to be tailored to each company. Like you could have some fairly generic questions, which you always ask. But I think having some questions to ask at the end of the interview and something like going to that point is always have, always ask a question at the end of the interview. And it could, I think a one that I personally like hearing like and it's not cheap or anything but like, i think is is like why you know if someone asks me why did i join the company or why do i like working here i think that's always a good question because that's such a nice it's, question it's, I love it's, that. It's, it's, it's answer or you know you know where do you see the company going it's just something that kind of it's not as black and white it's almost a person opinion and it's almost like they're interviewing you briefly you, you, you know what i mean or yeah, what do yeah, you do you your here or something like that especially if say you're going for a software developer role and you're talking to a software developer who is the interviewer they've been where you've been so they've got an answer so it's it's almost making them it's a, again that humanizing element where suddenly go hang on a minute this person i'm talking to is me four years ago or something like that and they suddenly go oh yeah i'll give them an answer. you know it creates that connection there's another thing it's almost that like mini networking you know because even though you might not get the job and I've had this before, like you might make a really good impression. The interview will go, you know what? You didn't get the job. But I like, you know, I really enjoyed our conversation. And if there's another opportunity, I would speak to you again, or I will recommend you to something. Do you know what I mean? And again, it creates that, it creates that nice ending. You know, it, it closes that loop. Um, in terms of other preparation you can do, I think if there's going to be a technical element, I think just, I think just thinking about, if you've got limited experience like not just talking about projects you've done but problems you've solved so for instance if yeah. i've seen on cvs like oh i like i saw this on a cv actually i sort of created a dating app um like a proof of concept of a dating app and i thought that's a bit random to do but that's cool and i said oh well, why did you do that and he was like well i've tried other ones and i noticed there was something missing so i thought I'm going to create a proof of concept of this and build like a dummy version because I thought that would be fun to have. And I was like, great, that's that's really cool to hear. Like you ha you saw a gap and you create a solution. So that's, again, like when you're hiring a person into a company, you're hiring because you have a problem you want to solve. So you want someone to come in and contribute to solving, whether that's 
we need to get more you know we need to get make our code database better or we need to get more apps out or you know it's like there's always some problem we're trying to solve so if someone's a natural a problem solver that's always a good thing so i think it's great to list things on your um it's great to list things on your cv but when it comes to the interview just say like why did you do those things like why did you like why did you make a blog on that like why mm -hmm. do you just that kind of that connection between showing those things i think is really important um, right. rob has asked a question um and i will just ask this one because we've got five minutes um do you have any tips for documenting your learning journey on linkedin yeah so i would treat linkedin a bit like an extension of your cv because at the end of the day there's so many people like far more people will see you than on there than they'll see anywhere else like the, you know so i think try i think what is good to do is, is have a blog but like whenever you create a new blog post like share it on linkedin or even create just like a post like just say something like hey i learned this new thing the other day and like I say, you don't have to be an expert, but people people enjoy seeing that. Like people will say, "Hey, good job," or "Have you thought of this?" Because people actually give you feedback. But I've seen that before, where someone will just say, "Hey, I'm currently learning, I know Carly Linux or something like that, and I did this, and it was cool." And then someone will comment underneath and say, "Have you tried this?" or "Have you looked at these resources?" And then you'll be like, "Great, that's all learning for me to do." So I think that like just posting like bite size i'm not saying like essays on linkedin but like bite no. size and like if you've got a blog to post about it like link to it maybe like in the, in the comments or in the thing but just people like to see like snapshots of journeys because like there's so many people i've followed who i've seen go from like having no experience to like having jobs and, like for me it's like satisfying to see that journey evolve and people will passively like watch along and they'll become invested in you like they'll they'll always like cheer you on like they'll be like i want this person to succeed because i see how hard they're working and i want and they might even again i've i've done that i've reached out to people and said hey i see that you're posting loads about this i've got a job here or someone mm -hmm. i know posted this role maybe you should apply and, and again when employers like a lot of employers or interviewers will look at your linkedin and they'll like look back and say hey this person's been doing some cool stuff you know um yeah i think i think like that kind of thing like bite-sized like snapshots of where you're going so people can kind of say hey a month ago they were doing this or six months ago they were doing this now they're doing this yeah you know, it's again it's like a it's like a, it's like a watch along you know you, you get you know you yeah. get less than that person in their journey so definitely agree and i think that's what's good about linking this back to networking events is you can get the people who you meet if you go to a networking event and you just go to people like oh can i add you on linkedin and building up your network on linkedin because it's also about having i guess the right people on linkedin to see your content and what you're putting out there um i always say if people are applying for a job somewhere to maybe add the other developers who work within a company and find out a little bit more about them um i think Sorry, just so it's in my head. I think one thing I think that is super useful as well, and I've done this as well, is like if you, especially if you're a junior, is like look at a company you want to work at, even if they've got no jobs, and like connect with some of the junior developers or associate developers that are there, and just say, hey, like just wanted to connect. You know, I see that you've recently joined the company. How are you finding it? Like, just ask an open question like that because they were where you were not so long ago so they've been mm -hmm. on that journey and they might not always offer advice but they might say hey you know good to hear from you let's stay connected and then they'll think to themselves like hey like that person reached out to me a little while ago like maybe you know we might have an, we've got an opening or they might just offer some tips because as i say they're not a senior who interviewed you know years and years ago you know they, they've been where you are recently and like they they know how hard it is so they will probably offer you some advice or they're just a good connection to have. So I think I always say to people like, try and connect and talk to the people who are where you want to be in the next six months, because it, then it gives you somewhere to go. Like, again, when I started looking for a job, I would connect with people who are working internally, you know, doing a similar job to what I wanted to do and said, hey, you know, yeah, how is it going? What's it like? You know, and not everyone reply, but some people say, hey, you know, it's good, like, you know, what kind of things to you know and you get a conversation going so mm -hmm. i think that's a really good thing to do especially at the junior level so. 
Me too. And I think that links back to um, the question we got earlier about job burnout and different approaches of looking for jobs. Yeah. And this, I, I think that approach is a really good way to sort of break it up a bit. It's very natural. Um, finding, yeah, finding a company you're really passionate about and investing some time into getting to know their employees and their products and what they're all about. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to have to leave that because I've got another meeting in like a couple of minutes. But um, that was great. Thank you so much, James. You've been amazing. Um, James is available. I'm sure he'll let you all add him on LinkedIn. He's James well, Riley. Um, <laughs> thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, if you're catching up and you fancy some more information, always feel free to get in touch. Um, and reach out to myself um, but thank you again James you've been an absolute pleasure to talk to some really really great tips there um, I was writing them down which I very rarely do um, nowadays but they were just great so yeah thank you so much I really appreciate you coming to join us today that's a pleasure thank you for having me Alice and thank you to everyone who joined and asked questions enjoy uh, the rest of your day. Bye. bye bye